Hey everybody and welcome to Adventures with Peps. Today we are going to be painting Kidney, the strontium dog bounty hunter who has fallen on some hard times. But before we get into that, grab a cup of coffee, make sure you don't put your paint in it, and let's get going. So who is Kidney? Kidney was a strontium dog mutie bounty hunter. Once very good at his job, he lost the plot when he started drinking heavily. He died while tracking down the criminal known as the Mutator in partnership with Johnny Alpha and Wolf Sternhammer. So it's a pretty sad character, but not much you can do with a sad character in a 2000 AD story, apart from kill him off. Uh, we started off with a black undercoat, and then I just slapped a ton of white down because I wanted him to look kind of bright. So I gave it a thin wash with uh, ceramic white, or ceramite white, ceramic white. What am I on today? Did that cup of coffee even help me? So this actually has quite a lot of steps to it. Uh, we got the, his top, his trousers, his boots. There's a lot going on. So we're kicking things off with Hive Dweller Purple. I'm going to use it on his trousers. In the artwork that I referenced for this paint job, his purple is a lot uh, paler, a lot more, I guess, lilac-y is probably the correct term. Now, I don't have a purple of that style. I easily could have mixed this in with some white and done something along those lines, but I didn't feel that really worked for it either. So I just went with Hive Dweller Purple. It has come out rather dark, darker than I was expecting, but I do like it, so I'm not going to mess with it. We're going to get all the base coats down and then we'll do some additional paint levels on it. Up next comes the Sand Golem. I really like this colour. Um, it's kind of a brownish... It's between skeleton and brown as a colour. <laughs> I'm so bad at describing colours. But it's it's not a pale sand. It's a darker sand. It has a bit of uh, life and warmth to it. I'm going to use this for his sleeves, his side panelling, uh, the top of his boots, the cuff part of it. I'm just going to flood the areas with it. I'm not super fancy when it comes to my painting. You guys know this by now. I love to get some colours down. Now with this model and this video in particular, you're going to see some extra stages before the actual final, glam final glamour shots where I actually do some additional stages. This is because I had pots of paint that I felt fit the colour scheme of him better than the washes that I've got. So... You're going to see some extra stages. That's a real treat for you. And because of that, I feel you should all hit like, subscribe, follow, whatever you want to call it down below. And you should also drop a comment, maybe a, a face of some short, sort in representation of Kidney. And I'll make sure to reply to all the comments below. Right, making sure I get these cuffs nice and neat. This model didn't take long to paint. Even with the extra steps, uh, it's nice and hot here in Ottawa at the moment. We're in a bit of a heat wave. So I wasn't too worried about the paint running into each other, which was a real nice feature. This character, he's so strange. Like, it feels so wrong for there not to be a head on those shoulders. I appreciate it's in his knee. But what a unique character this one is. It's sad that he is an alcoholic. And you can actually see the booze in his hand. He's gripping it with one hand as he's running into action. I remember him in the story. It's been a while now since I read the Strontium Dog comics. But I do remember his story arc, and it was a sad one. He's such an interesting and intriguing character. And I think John Wagner did a great story showing the downfall of a life of, I guess, excess and addiction can lead. It's very, uh, very poignant, very sad, but um, I'm glad to finally have this guy painted. I'm going to try and mix things up. I know I've been hitting ABC Warriors hard recently, uh, probably too hard for my own good. I need a little break, so I'm going to be mixing in some of the figures off the shelves. I think you'd have seen earlier this week, I dropped another Imperium video. I need to get that series finished and out the way as well. So that I can just sell up all my GW 
and move forward with Warlord games. All right, I think we are all done now with the Sand Golem. Just make sure I didn't miss any bits and we will let that sit and dry for a minute. And as you can see, the lights have changed. Don't know why that happened. Highlight blue, there we go. They sorted themselves out. I've been getting some weird electricity problems at the moment. I don't know what's going on. Might be just basic power surges. But I'm going to use this on his body. His picture is a lot more of a, a lighter blue. So I do have a color in mind for later on, but I felt this was a good base coat for it. I'm just going to carefully go around, making sure I don't hit the sand golem on his arms or on his belt. I also want to make sure that bottle of grog in his hands don't get caught with the blue either. Be a real pain to try and cover up. So I'm just going to take my time, be nice and neat. Obviously this paint will flow where it wants to go, but if you can help guide it, you might as well make your life a little bit easier. With the blue now complete, I've had a sip of coffee and I've grabbed the hardened leather. This is a nice, nice, easy step. It's just his boots. Nice and quick. We'll quickly uh, follow the cuffs. If the lighter sand golem does happen to bleed in, which it doesn't, by the way, but if it was, it would be very easily hidden by this color. I know you can watch GW videos and they tell you to start with the darkest color first. I disagree with that. I work the opposite way for the most part. Obviously the purple was a bit unique because I wanted that out of the way. But I feel if you're working up against a lighter color with a darker one, if you've made a mistake, it's easier to cover up. Trying to go the other way is a real nightmare. And there we go. Feet are done. That was a real nice easy step. There's a goddamn bubble right in there. Let's pop it. All right, there we go. Feet done. Up next will be the Crusader skin. Now, obviously, I'm using this on his knee face. <laughs> what a sentence. Um, and then his hands on his hands. I, I don't know where I'm going with that one. But yeah, you all know this stage. Slap it down. Try not to spill onto this bottle at all. I think I'm going to go yellow on the bottle. There was a part of me that wanted to go red. But he's got his strontium badge right in the middle of his chest. Very close to that bottle as well. So that's not going to work. So it's either going to be yellow or green. Um, I decided yellow. Because I felt it blend a little bit with the sand golem. They're kind of spaghetti western-esque figures and story arcs. So I thought that probably would go together a lot better than some random ass colour. All right, pretty much tidied up the hands. Like I said, this is a nice easy step. I'm finding this model very relaxing to paint. It's what, it's Thursday night here in Ottawa. It's pretty hot. I got some YouTube videos playing. I am just working my way through this model. If you want to know what I'm watching, drop me a comment below and I'll reply. Otherwise, I'll keep my secrets to myself for now. This is probably another good time to say, hey, if you've reached the 10 minute mark with me, maybe it's time to drop me a follow. Say hi in the comments. You know you want to. I really hate that you have to do call to actions, but you know, every little bit of helps. I'm so close to the 4,000. We're coming up to halfway through the year and I'm going to recap some of my goals for this year. Hang on, we're now on to Slaughter Red. And one of my big goals for this year was actually to hit 4,000 hours viewed. I'm currently at 3,700, which is amazing. I know in no way, shape or form does my view counts blow up the internet, but I am so amazed that I've got a wonderful little diehard community that do seemingly watch every video almost to completion and I'm so happy with that I do truly appreciate it according to my YouTube data I need to work on my thumbnails that seems to be what's letting me down but you know ugh, who wants to work on thumbnails when you could be painting figures instead 
Right, the red is now done on that strontium badge. Oh, I missed a bit. Let me just fix that. Blob, blob, blob. And with the paint now dry, we can move on to Zealot Yellow. We are closing in to the final base coat colors here. Two left to go. But yeah, what does it mean for the channel when I hit 4,000 hours viewed? To be honest, absolutely nothing. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing and the way I'm doing it. Uh, the only thing that might change, I think, uh, Jedi Survivor will be the last computer game I play on this channel. Similar to the Pokemon, it's been nice having it on this channel. But I know, I I appreciate that maybe you're not all here for these different things. So I'm going to spread them out a bit. I started a Pokemon channel, which is doing fine. And I also plan to do a computer game channel. Like I said, this is all hobby stuff for me. It's all sideline gigs. So if I can uh, spread the love through a few channels, why not? Then it doesn't mess up any silly algorithms or anything like that. All right, we are on the final paint, the Grave Lord Grey. Going to use this on his pistol because I hate using metallic paints. And then I'm also going to ring Kidney's face. I'm doing that first because my brush still has a nice point on it. So this is the perfect time to do this very thin line around his head. Now, I have waffled a lot in this video, so if you are still here, I do appreciate it. I just might turn that into a community post about goals for the channel, just so that you don't have to listen to me rabbit on about it. But I feel I'm going to try and focus this channel down to just maybe Warlord games and miniature painting. So it'll mostly be 2000 AD stuff, maybe bolt action in the future. And then we'll move the computer game somewhere else and the Pokemon somewhere else. And I think we should be pretty good then. So there might be less videos on this channel per se, but the other channels will start getting some videos put into them instead. And if I get really confident, I might just take a bit longer with my videos, see if I can improve the quality. I do try my best with every video. Sometimes I change slank and it makes it worse. <laughs> like uh, that poor Necron and having to film off site this week. The sound quality was atrocious. But lessons were learned, so hopefully uh, in future videos that won't happen again. Also, you can't help it when you have no internet and bad power. So we grab the Calgar Blue. We have now moved on to some highlights, I assume you'd call it. Whoops, sorry about that. My phone started blasting. Turn that off. Right, this is going to be very similar to a heavy dry brushing, <laughs> I assume you'd call it. I'm also going to clean it up a little bit, but I want the, I've forgotten what blue I use now, I want the High Lord Blue to be in the recesses this Calgar blue to be the dominant blue of his top. So I'm just going to work my way around. Any darker areas, I'm going to just leave dark. Any creases, I'm leaving dark. And then I'm just going to try and smoothly go around the model as best as I can. And pick out all the higher areas. I'm not going to do another highlight stage after this. So in my mind, it's only going to be tabletop ready. But he's going to look great in the display case next to the other mutants that I've got painted up now. And I think we're getting close to actually having a lot of my strontium dogs done now. I've got maybe, I don't know, between 10 or 12 figures left of the series to paint. Most of them are the build your own mooties. And then I need to really start pestering Warlord Games to re-release the figures that I'm missing. Because I'm missing a lot. I'm missing a lot and it makes me unhappy. I really should have grabbed them all when they were on sale. Which turned out to be the final sale. <laughs> I'm, I'm still bitter about that. Warlord Games. I love you as a company. I love that you're bringing the 2000 AD figures to me. But the fact that that series disappeared after that sale. Oh, that hurt me. It hurt me and I'm not willing to pay the eBay scalper prices. 
no matter how much I want them. And to be fair, they'd be easy to bring in to the gaming system. You just release the rule book and the figures. That's it. You don't need a starter set or anything like that. Just release the rule book. We've all got the tokens now from ABC Warriors and Judge Dredd. So there's not much you really need to do. Just release the rule book to buy separately for people that want it. And uh, start selling the figures. That's all you got to do. Warlord Games, do it, please. I'll take a small commission if you do. But uh, ultimately, please bring back the Strontium Dog figures. I know it's metal molds and metal costs. But I tell you what, I'd happily pay your prices for new metal than paying scalper prices on eBay. Up next is the Rack of Flesh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I am going to use that on, obviously, all his flesh tones. So I'm just going to carefully, carefully pick out some facial features. I don't want to mess this up. He looks pretty cool with just the flesh Crusader skin flesh wash. But he, he looks a bit too dark skinned. So I'm going to try and lighten it up and not make it look terrible. It's amazing how you have the world's smallest paintbrush in your hand, but then when you put it next to the model, it feels like you're using a paint roller. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it. It really drives me nuts. I need to have more confidence in myself. I know what I'm doing. I do also need to retire these GW brushes. I've got an army painter brush set from years ago now, from very early on in this channel. I've barely touched them. It's I should start using them and actually look after my brushes. Up next is the Baylor Brown, if I'm saying that one correct. God, I struggle with the names on these paints. And I'm this I'm going to use on his uh, thigh guards, I guess, of what they are, and his sleeves. I'm just going to try and paint stripes. This paint has not been used in a while. It hasn't fully mixed, so I'm going to give it a good old shake again. And let's try this a bit better, see if we got some pigment on the brush this time. There we go. I'm going to use this to just line up stuff, build up the colours a little bit. And I'm going to work my way around the side guards and the, sh ugh, and the sleeves. God, I'm struggling to talk. Time for another sip of coffee, I think. Today I am drinking an espresso from the machine. Uh, I think it's the Mexico pod that my lovely supporters kindly bought me. Your monthly subscriptions are funding my coffee addiction, so I do appreciate that. It's helping me get through. It's also making my hand shake. But <laughs> altogether, it's a win-win for me. All right, we're going to move on to the sleeves, which isn't going to be very exciting, so we'll skip forward a little bit. And with some final sweeps of the brush, you can get an idea of what I'm trying to achieve. It's pretty much going over the entire base coat that I put on and just keeping those recesses dark. Up next is the Ceramite White and the most stressful part of the Strontium Dog model. The S and the D. Now, I was going to attempt to try and film it and then I decided I can't. I can't do it. I need this model as close to my eyeballs as humanly possible. So I took it off camera and painted it on. It's so fiddly. It felt so stressful that if I messed it up, it's either going to look crap, which is not far off of looking crap, or I'm just going to mess it up completely. But luckily I got something that looks like an S and a D onto the badge. Up next came the Averland Aval Sunset. I forgot these words. I'm going to be using that on his butler grog. And my camera decides to unfocus. Um, How nice of it. Look at this. If you can't tell by the blurry photo, 
which I finally catch up upon. I'm slowly going to cover and layer up this bottle, make it a bit more solid and yellow. Kind of looks like he's holding a mango at the end of the day, but I'm on board for that. And once I got this color down, I'm pretty much going to leave the model alone to dry overnight. Uh, this is a new step I'm doing. I get it to this stage and then I'm going to let it fully dry. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to play with it. I'm going to stop painting, turn off all the gear. We'll give it eight hours. Eight hours. As if I get eight hours of sleep in this household. More like six hours to dry. And then we will check out the results. So we are on to the next day. He's looking great. He looks very bright though. So I've decided to use Agrax Earthshade. And I'm going to dull him down a little bit. I'm not going to put any on the Strontium badge because I want that to look nice and bright. I'm not going to put any on his hands or his face. And I'm going to leave the, the bottle alone, I think, unless I spill some of this onto it. But everything else clothing wise is going to get a hit of this. It's going to help bring the color schemes together. It's a real shame that the purple doesn't look more purple on this video. It looks very dark blue. It's definitely purple. <laughs> Please believe me. It's definitely purple. But yeah, we're going to cover the whole model and then we'll put it to the side again and let it dry up. We'll get some glamour shots and some photos and I think we'll call it a video. We'll call it there. As always, I appreciate you if you have stopped this far. Make sure you drop me a face picture down below. And I will catch you in another video very, very, very soon. As always, cheers for watching.